But I think uh, over the last couple of years, in fact, we have seen a phenomenon of uh, uh, decelerating growth and uh, accelerating inflation. And unfortunately, the uh, stickiness and persistence in that inflation. Now, that has really created a lot of uh, difficulties for the policymakers because inflation is, is being driven by not just, uh, you know, the uh, uh, rupee weakness and as we call it imported uh, inflation but more importantly through uh, Arctic food articles primary articles and that is something which pinches hard uh, all the uh, uh, you know people uh, particularly the lower strata so it's very important to address the supply side of constraints uh, particularly in the agriculture sector uh, the reforms are needed to alleviate uh, you know uh, some of the issues which bother agriculture in terms of lack of adequate infrastructure warehousing coal storages etc as also you know pay adequate attention to the distributional aspects of the agriculture produce we need to address inflation coming from uh, you know the primary food articles and that's where we have seen persistent double digit inflation so going forward I think no doubt good monsoons have provided uh, a very uh, strong hope that food article inflation will begin to ease but what it would also be needed to get combined with is uh, some uh, easing pressure on the fuel and that essentially is a function of the global crude oil prices if crude oil prices remain somewhere between say 105 and 110 dollars uh, a barrel uh, we hope to see limited uh, damage on to that uh, fuel inflation story but uh, there I think uh, you know the other argument that prevails is the lack of uh, adequate pass-through for instance in diesel pricing we are still awaiting a, a, a pass-through of global prices and which has artificially capped the diesel prices and therefore does does not get reflected in inflation but if we assume uh, you know in uh, fuel prices getting revised and if we also expect food inflation to ease I think uh, uh, by the end of March this year we could see inflation at in the area of somewhere averaging at 6%, uh, which no doubt is going to be lower over the last two years in comparison. Uh, India has remained a high inflation story over the last three years, uh, where inflation has persisted over 6 to 7%. Definitely not uh, you know, something that policymakers would be comfortable with. Uh, the Reserve Bank of India has adequately articulated on its comfort zone in terms of inflation band remaining somewhere between four and a half to five percent and over the medium to long term at around three percent I think for that we need a very very strong uh, effort being built into into addressing su a major supply side constraints particularly emanating in the agriculture sector as also uh, you know uh, allowing some of the uh, industrial environment to thrive in uh, creating domestic uh, uh, excellence in production we are importing some of the uh, you know items where we have competency but where probably we have not uh, you know adequately added efforts into I think if we are able to do that in combination we could see a more structural kind of uh, you know easing of inflation but uh, till such time uh, India may probably, uh, you know, live with elevated inflation. I think it's extremely important and of utmost urgency that uh, we address uh, agriculture uh, inflation as quickly as we can.